Isaiah, why would you be a great fit in New York? Uh, personally, I feel like I would be a great fit anywhere just for the fact that um, my versus with my versatility, I can fit into any defensive scheme, no matter what it is. And, um, you know, when also I feel like I'd be a great fit anywhere because when getting me, um, it's like getting three players in one. So. Isaiah, when they talk about you, they talk about the fact that you can play linebacker safety, you can cover in the slot, you can pretty much do it all. You let Clemson not only with 104 tackles, but 67 solo. My question to you would be, where do you think the best usage of Isaiah Simmons is? Would you, should you be a linebacker? Should it be all over the field, just versatile? Or is it, should you be a specialist? What are your thoughts? Um... You know, honestly, I feel like I could, you could do a little bit of both because, you know, a lot of defenses, they run a lot of sub packages. So I could fit, tr like, great in there as well as being, like, an outside linebacker, stack linebacker, or even a strong safety. So personally, um, you know, just, I feel like just put me anywhere near that ball and uh, I'm going to make it happen. The evaluations of you range from he's actually the best player in the draft overall to – there was one executive who recently said you were overrated because while you're very versatile, um, if, you're, if you don't have a creative coach, then, then you'll be stuck in a system that won't work for you. You won't be able to dominate in any one, at middle linebacker or at safety or something like that. Do you think that today's NFL, where your kind of versatility is valued, means that no matter where you go, there's going to be a good enough coach? Um, or are there some coaches you watch where you go, boy, I'd really like to play for that guy? Um, I don't really think that there's any systems or coaches out there that I could end up being with where they wouldn't really know what to do with me. Um, like I said, I just I just feel like with my versatility that whatever, wherever I ended up or whoever I ended up with, that everything would be, you know, everything would be fine um, I'm a four down player not like a sub package guy at all so I feel like that really doesn't that doesn't really matter about the scheme or the coach you had 11 Isaiah, I mentioned sacks this earlier in You're... your colleague go ahead Stephen A sorry Molly I said you had 11 sacks in your collegiate career at Clemson over four years but eight last season what happened differently for last season for you that didn't happen the three previous years as it pertains to that particular category? Um, there, I was blitzing from everywhere. So, that, I mean, that was definitely something that helped. Um, in the scheme of our defense last year, was a little different than it was previous years, which allowed me to be around the quarterback more, around the ball more, which allowed me to get to him. So another thing that was way different was um, my first two years of college, I was – I was a uh, safety, so there wasn't really too many blitzes I had. My first blitz or my first sack actually did come from safety, but last year just playing on the line of scrimmage, um, stacking in the box, and then also coming down from like a safety position, uh, we had a lot of blitzes dialed into those, which gave me a lot of opportunities, as well as you know just just working on my craft and and making sure I had pass rush moves and and knowing actually how to beat the tackle and not just out there blitzing. Isaiah, I need you to flex on people for a moment. I said that you're the top linebacker on all draft boards, but we these Ohio State guys, Jeff Okuda, uh, Chase Young, in terms of defensive players, a lot of people have them being drafted ahead of you. Why should you be the first defensive player taken? Um, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is on game day, you have a 53-man roster, but when you have me, you got 56. So, um, you know, I'm not a math major, but that sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> so this, because of the pandemic and uh, social distancing and quarantining and that sort of thing, um, the draft's going to be very different this year, obviously. What are your thoughts as it approaches um, you know, having changed the, the, the situation being so different than most years. I'm sure it's a moment you fantasized about for years, and it's not going to be the way you'd imagined. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, um, you know, at, it's really different, but at the same time, you know, I don't know what I don't know just because I've never been through this process before. But um, it's definitely different 
Um, I guess it's kind of special in a way. Everybody's going to remember this draft class just based off of uh, what's going on around the world now. But um, I'm really excited for it. It's, it's still like a life-changing moment, something you always dreamed of as a kid, regardless if you're walking across the stage actually at the draft or, you know, just enjoying it at home with your family and friends. So um, I'm really excited for it. Isaiah, what the hell happened in the national championship game, man? What happened um, to Clemson? Is it just about Joe Burrow? What, what, I'm sorry to bring back those memories. Just tell me. What happened? No, I mean, it's not just about Joe. I mean, one person can't win a football game, but, um, you know, they, they at the end of the day, the game comes down to explosive plays and third downs, and they won both those battles. So, um, slowly just started to fall their way after they started winning more third downs and gaining more explosive plays than we did, so. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.